when most people think of respiration, they think of this, breathing. This act of bringing air in and expelling air, inhalation and expiration, is actually called ventilation. True respiration is occurring at the cellular level. It's happening at the cells. We're bringing oxygen to the cells. We're having chemical reactions happen within the cell. And then we're having carbon dioxide produced as a waste product, which is gotten rid of. So cellular respiration is occurring at the cellular level. It's the chemical changes and reactions that are occurring because of the combination of oxygen with other things. So our technical definition of cellular respiration is the combination of oxygen with various substances within cells resulting in the formation of carbon dioxide and H2O water, as well as the release of energy. Now, before we go any further, think about this. We breathe in oxygen. All kindergarten kids know this. We breathe in oxygen and as we're exhaling, we're breathing out carbon dioxide. Well, where does the carbon dioxide come from? Do we have little carbon dioxide cans of gas in our body that we open up and we release the carbon dioxide? No. Carbon dioxide is being produced as a waste product by our cells. So when you're breathing out the carbon dioxide, you're breathing out the gases that have been collected by the circulatory system from the cells producing energy. We need to bring in the oxygen Boom, 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 magic happens. We'll talk about the magic in a minute. And we release the carbon dioxide as well as the water. We have two basic types of cellular respiration. These are terms that you have heard before. You have heard of aerobic and anaerobic. Now let's put these in the context of science. Aerobic means with oxygen. We have to have oxygen present for aerobic respiration. It is more efficient and more complicated than anaerobic respiration. We use oxygen and glucose and we wind up with carbon dioxide, water, and the energy in the form of ATP. Aerobic respiration begins with a process called glycolysis, and we'll look at the steps in another video. But think about this, glycolysis, 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 we're breaking down glucose, glycolysis. The other type of respiration is anaerobic. Anaerobic means without oxygen. Oxygen is not present. It is good for critters, organisms, that, don't, that do not have a steady source or any source of oxygen. Like aerobic with oxygen, it also begins with glycolysis. So glycolysis is a common start for both aerobic and anaerobic. Let's take a look at what this means in the real world. You are familiar with aerobic and anaerobic. If you've ever had PE in school, you are very familiar with aerobic and anaerobic. If you've ever worked out, if you've ever gone to the gym, if you've ever gotten on a Stairmaster, if you ever lift weights, do you even lift? <laughs> then you are familiar with these concepts. Aerobic is with oxygen. These are things that you can do for a prolonged period of time, assuming that you are in shape to do these things for prolonged periods of time. So think Stairmaster, think elliptical, think jogging, think a bicycle, think walking. These are all aerobic exercises. Anaerobic means without oxygen. These are exercises that you're just not getting a good supply of oxygen to keep up with the demands that you're putting your body through. So examples of this type of exercise would be sprinting, heavy weightlifting, and intervals. Here's what I want you to do if you can do this. If you're watching these videos in a car, obviously you can't do this or what have you, but if you can do the following thing, I want you to do the following thing because it helps illustrate the point. What I want you to do is squat down as far as you can go. No, no leaning against anything, but squat down and hold your arms. You're gonna do a sumo squat and you're gonna hold this squat for as long as you possibly can. What you should be feeling over time is a burning sensation. This burning sensation is a result of anaerobic 
exercise, you're building up something called lactic acid. And this lactic acid is where you have that burning sensation from. Let's go back to aerobic respiration. Most eukaryotes are going to use aerobic respiration. Not all, but most. During aerobic respiration, nutrients are catabolized, broken down. I always like to think of cat Catabolize. Cats, how they break things down, right? So it's uh, uh, catabolized or ca uh, catabolized into CO2, carbon dioxide, and water. The overall formula for cell respiration is the following C6H12O6 plus 6O2 yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. Now, don't freak. Do not freak out over this formula. It's really not that hard. I purposely presented it in a hard way, but let's break this down. If you were with me from lesson two with the chem chemistry section, we took a look at glucose. Glucose's formula is C6H12O6. C6H12O6, C6H12O6, C6H12O6. That is glucose. So the formula says that a thing of glucose plus oxygen, we write oxygen O2, yields, gives off six carbon dioxides, six waters, and energy. Now, in case you might have some trouble remembering how much of what, I like to tell this little story. When I was teaching high school, I taught life science. Uh, one of the schools I taught at was a private Christian non-denominational high school. And I had an anatomy class. And I told my students they had to memorize this equation. And I thought it would be a nice Mr. Ford. And so I gave them the equation, but I had three blank spots. I blanked out how many oxygen, I blanked out how many carbon dioxide, and I blanked out how many water. Didn't think of it. And so as the test is going on, one of my students starts to giggle. Like, that's an odd reaction during the test. And then a little bit later, another student starts to giggle. And I'm going, why are they, why are you giggling during an exam, and I'm like, this is really weird. I mean, this is not a normal, I mean, crying, yeah, I've heard crying, I've heard pleading, I've heard begging, but laugh, I'm kidding, but laughing is not really a normal sound. So then they started looking at me like, I couldn't understand why. So after the test was over, now remember, private non-denominational Christian high school, after the test was over, they go, Mr. Ford, did you do that on purpose? And I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? They go, the answer to that question, about cell metabolism, glucose plus oxygen gives off carbon dioxide, water, and energy. I'm like, yeah. They go, did you purposely leave the blanks there? I'm like, well, yeah, I wanted you to answer it. They go, yeah, but the answer was 666. I'm like, so anyways, it's 666. Don't forget those numbers when you talk about this equation, okay? So one glucose molecule plus how many oxygen? Six oxygen give off how many carbon dioxide? Six carbon dioxides. How many waters? Six waters and energy. And then after the test, I asked the students, please not to tell the headmaster. I really didn't want to. <laughs> Anyways, so moving on. Know the equation. This is an equation that I make my students know at the very least. You should know it too. The aerobic respiration, know the formula. Okay. Uh, words to know in addition to just what we're talking about here as far as the general uh, formula. We have to know some terms. For example, oxidation. Oxidation is defined as the loss of electrons in an atom with an accompanying increase in the positive valence. Think about this. Protons are p -p -p positive, right? Neutrons are n -n -n neutral, and electrons are negative. If we lose an electron, electron has gotten rid of, if we kick an electron out, the atom becomes slightly more positive. We've gotten rid of something that's been negative, we're slightly more positive. Reduction is the opposite. Reduction, here's my very important uh, academic voice, reduction in chemistry, a type of reaction in which a substance gains electrons and positive valence is decreased. 
What we're saying here is that we've gained an electron. Remember, electrons are negative. So we've gained an electron and now we're slightly less positive, or a little bit more negative. So oxidation, we get rid of an electron, we become slightly positive. Reduction, we gain an electron and we become slightly negative. We can have things called oxidation reduction reactions. They are chemical interactions in which one substance is oxidized. In other words, they get rid of an electron and thus increase their positive valence. They're slightly more positive. While another substance gains the electron, is reduced, and becomes slightly more negative. This is an oxidation reduction reaction. So what does this have to do with cell metabolism? Well, glad you asked that question. Even if you didn't, I'll pretend you did. This is what happens here. During the process of aerobic respiration, the glucose is going to give up a hydrogen, an electron, so it's oxidized. Oxygen on the other side accepts the hydrogen and thus more electrons, it becomes reduced. So aerobic respiration is an example of a redox process and an oxidation reduction process. We have two more videos left in this series. We're gonna take a look at the steps of cell respiration. Be sure to check out mrfordscox.net for exclusive access.